Welcome to Dr. B Ear Training Edition number four. Each one of these videos is going to get a little bit more challenging, a little bit more difficult as you try to hear what's being played musically and then figure out how to write it down correctly. So first up is a review of triads. We're going to play for you uh, either a major triad, minor triad, augmented triad, or diminished triad. And this is the way that you would normally designate those. They can be in root position, in which case you wouldn't write anything. First inversion, which would mean you put a six, or second inversion, where you would write a six four. These, I'm gonna play the triads either in uh, open position or closed position in standard SATB format with standard doubling. Okay, so let's start off with that. So, number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. And lastly, number eight.
All right, our next section is going to deal with seventh chords. This is something new to challenge your ear. For the seventh chords, we're going to use the five common types. Major, major seven, and there's a number of different ways in which these seventh chords can be designated. Some people will just call it a major seven chord, which essentially means a major third, perfect fifth, and a major seven. The way I'm using to designate it is the first letter indicates the triad, the triad type, and the second part, the second letter and number, indicate the interval for the seventh. So major, major seven means major triad with a major seven. And so that's, the, that's another way of designating the different sonorities for seventh chords, and that's the one that I'm going to be using for today. So your options are major, major seven, and I'll write that down here, major, major seven, major, minor seven, also called a dominant seven, minor, minor seven, diminished minor seven, which is also called half diminished seven, and diminished, diminished seven, or fully diminished seven. So again, you could also call this major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, half diminished seven, diminished seven. Those are just different names for the same type of sound that we're talking about. We're going to give you 12 examples. These are going to all be in root position only, no inversions. Again, four voices, standard SATV voicing. Uh, there, I will only be playing complete chords, so I'm not going to leave out the fifth on a major seven or major, ma major minor seven or minor minor seven. It's all going to be one, three, five, seven, but just open and closed voicings. All right, good luck. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. 
number eight. Number nine. Number ten. Number eleven. And Finally, number 12. All right, and then let's move on to a melodic dictation. Each one throughout the videos, I'm trying to make it a little bit harder or at least challenge your ears in a slightly different way. So this one is gonna be 10 measures long, a little bit longer, and we're gonna be in a meter of 6-4. Now 6-4 is a compound meter, it's a compound duple meter. So it's much like, it's very similar to 6-8, uh, so you could count it you could count the, what's called the little beats, one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's really a duple meter of one, two, one, two, with a triple subdivision of the beat. So one and uh, two and uh, totaling a, a, four, a total of six subdivisions within each beat. Now, this could be in major or minor key. I'm not going to tell you what I'll what I will do is I will play for you a 1-4-5-1 one in the appropriate key. So you have to recognize that this is either going to be in a major key that has four flats, and I'm not going to tell you, or a minor key that has four flats, and I'm not going to tell you. So you got to determine whether it's in a major or minor key based on the chords I'm going to play for you right at the beginning. You then need to decide whether there's a pickup or not to these ten measures. I might start exactly on beat one, it might be a pickup. I'm gonna count two measures before we begin. And then, and then finally, it could start on do, it could start on some other pitch within the key. There will be no chromaticism in this example. All right, you'll get five hearings for this example. Here is your one, four, five in the key. So this will tell you, if you're listening carefully, whether it's a major or minor key. First hearing, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. First hearing, 
One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Second hearing. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Third hearing. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Fourth hearing. At this point, you should pretty much have most of the melody figured out, certainly the beginning and the ending, maybe working on some of the, the middle, making sure you've got all the right rhythms and pitches. So here's the fourth hearing. One, two, one, two, three, four, five.
fifth and final hearing. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. If you are in a classroom setting, normally you would have a couple minutes to, to finish up after this. You would also, uh, you know, have to kind of complete everything on this timetable with this about this many hearings and this amount of time between hearings. If you're at home and you're watching this on YouTube and you're not in the classroom setting, obviously you have the luxury of being able to pause, replay things if you need to do that. But challenge yourself. Try to do it in the time allotted without pausing the video and, and see how well you do. And then if you need to go back and, and try to pick out some spots to see if you can really make sure they're correct, that's another great way to do this. So you can use this video in two ways. One, as if you were in a college classroom taking this as a test where you press go at the beginning and you just got that much time to do it. That might be the best way to do it the first time around. And then after that, you can use it as a study technique where you could just say, I'm going to pause and I'm going to, I'm going to use a keyboard to help me figure things out. I'm going to pause as much as I need and use, use this video again to make sure you really understand it, especially if you've missed anything. So if you go ahead and, and then watch the follow-up video that goes over the answers and you missed something, see if you can go back to this, take it again and figure it out and actually hear it. Better yet, chances are, you know, if you wait a wait couple weeks, you're going to forget exactly what all the answers were, and you can just take this quiz again. And you can keep taking it over and over every week, once a week. Take this quiz and see if you get better. Track, you know, track how many you get right and how many you get wrong, and see if you get better as the weeks go by. You should get better with each and every try. Good luck.